Yo guys, Crescent here. Welcome to my uh, second Stamina Nightblade build video. There's a uh, small changes that uh, we received from the Jester patch. That's why I've been changing up my build. And yeah, I I'll, I'll just call this build perfect because I'm a cat, Kajit. So you know, per and then why I call this build perfect is because this build is a complete build for Stamina Nightblade. It has good damage high max stamina high crit uh, you got extra damage from proc sets if you want to use them you get you can use choking as well really good healing because you got good crit and everything is just really really strong in, in for this build that's why i'll call it perfect but uh it's up to you to judge okay so like usual i will just go straight into the sets because that's the most important thing so what we will be running is uh Bone Pirate, this is a really really good set this patch because of the food that we will be using which is the drink that we will be using which is this uh, dubious Cameron Throne gives you stamina recovery, max stamina and max health this is a really really good drink for stamina nightblade especially medium armor stamina nightblade and you use this with a Bone Pirate set so I put triglyphs on big pieces the legs and uh, chest others I will just put a uh, or stamina glyphs, max stamina glyph, and um, everything is impenetrable. And there's an option for head and shoulders. For me personally, I like to go full damage build. Um, I I always play really aggressive with my builds. That's why I build damage. That's why Celine is a really good set for me. But if you don't like Celine, you could always use Choking. Choking is really really awesome. Or you can just mi mix and match uh, something like a. Uh, you could use some, something like cracks uh, with uh, one piece molakena if you want it's really up to you but for me i like uh, i like celine the best choking is really really top tier as well i would say choking is even better if you want to survive uh in outnumbered situations but for me i like to do damage that's why i go for celine and just put stamina glyphs you can put a uh, tricep glyph as you if you want if you want more health and uh, more magicka you can do that as well okay and then the damage will come from Viper. Uh, we will fit in Viper with 3 Jewelry. I put 2 Weapon Damage and 1 Recovery. And I put 2 uh, one hand, One-Handed uh, Weapons. And uh, on our Buff Bar, we will be using a Maelstrom Sword. You can use Master Sword as well. Just make sure it is uh, Defending. Defending is the best, best trait for Back Bar. Alright. So... The important thing that I would like to say in uh, in deciding what you want to use for your one-handed weapon, you, because you got four choices, you can use either sword, you can use your mouth, or you can use axe, or you can use dagger. I would say sword is the best if you are using any anything, any proc sets, or just sword is just the best because it gives you raw damage against shield shielded targets, against non shield targets, against everything. Sword is the best. Uh, secondly, I would say Mao is the second second best because uh, your proc sets can is affected by um, the penetration for Mao as well. So Mao is pretty good as well against you know this. There's a lot of heavy armor, stamina DKs, magicka DKs, uh, Templars. A lot of people are running heavy armor nowadays because of the damage you can apply. So uh, Mao is pretty good choice as well. And then third will come to dagger. Dagger, the one thing good about dagger is you can heal, your crit will heal, your vigor will heal, your rally will heal. That's why dagger is really underappreciated sometimes. And uh, lastly is axe. Axe is not good for this build because you don't want to apply the bleed from axe, you want to do raw damage. That's why uh, I would prefer, it, the best is you run two swords. But if you don't have swords, you can always run uh, Mao or you can run dagger. I don't have two swords. I only got one sword, so I put a dagger in. And this dagger is really easy to farm. That's why I, I slot it in. Just make sure it's sharpened. And yeah, another thing is we are not using poisons on the front bar. That's why um, it's really important that you use. Uh, uh, for me, I prefer disease damage. You can put poison damage if you want. Uh, disease damage is good to debuff your opponent. And I put a daedric damage. This is non block, non uh, reducible avoidable damage so which is really nice why we are not using on the front bar poisons on the front bar the main reason is because we are doing our combo will, will consist of 
going into cloak usually and then charge up a heavy attack so you apply both of this uh, health damage enchantment which is really strong and it, they can crit as well remember that so you do a heavy attack you apply both of this enchantment then you apply because it's a melee attack so you apply your uh, wiper poison damage which is just 8k not really strong but decent i guess it's not non-critable anymore it's decent and then you usually if you have in cap you just go into an in cap or you don't have in cap you do a surprise attack into a fear and then you do another surprise attack execute usually that's what i do i'll just charge up the heavy attack go hard in cap usually they will go about 40 percent health or so maybe 50 percent do a surprise attack and then uh then go into execute that is what i do usually that is one of the good combos okay uh so i'll just show you guys uh my my stats unbuff sets which is really really good actually uh, 11k max magicka decent 22.5k health quite good uh, 36k max stamina for a kajit which is is really really good if i'm like a great guard i'll have 38k or so maybe even more magicka recovery 600 400 health recovery and uh stamina recovery is 2.8k unbuff crit is really really awesome 60 60 percent and a weapon damage is uh, 2.2k uh i'll just show you after i buff up how, how much i will get on my dual wheel bar of course i'll have 2.6k uh, weapon damage 63 percent weapon crit this is really really high 3k max stamina uh, stamina recovery and yeah this is a really really solid uh, stat sheet you have here and uh, we'll be using serpent Mandestone because our crit is so high already i don't need to use uh, uh, the thief Mandestone. and shadow is not good because you can't crit with your with your proc sets so uh, i'll use a uh, serpent and of course if you some people don't like proc sets i understand i respect that so if you don't like proc sets you can always run something different like the sprigans is really good you can run maybe like you can run three agility and you use two uh two mule strom dagger or something like that which is really really strong as well it's really up to you how you want to switch it up or master dagger could work as well so for me i i like wiper because it gives me that crit and uh it's, it's just really nice when i'm a kajit you have a really high really high crit rate you heal a lot a lot your heals are a lot stronger and your your the crit your, it's just overall really really good because uh you crit a lot more okay so we are done with the manders i'll just go through the po uh, potions really quickly uh they're more or less the same uh, i don't have my tri stat pot here i use it already you can use detection pot if you need it um expedition this is a really good pot because you don't have bow anymore so uh, you need to remember that now you don't have bow so you can't do a dot throw into you don't have ma major mobility so um this pot is really good because it gives you major expedition sorry major expedition for 47 seconds which is the whole duration that's why i, I always spam this pot even when i'm when i'm running like even if i don't really need to use the pot i'll use it because i need that speed to to get out of a tricky situation you can't just rely on cloak you can't just rely on shit those are not enough you need sometimes you need movement speed to get to a to a line of sight area that's why i highly recommend you craft this potion and uh, of course, major savagery potions are really good. Gives you that extra crit you get until 75% or so if I use this potion. Which is really, really crazy. The amount of crit I get from this build. And uh, yeah, of course, you want to use lingering health. Could work as well, but it's not that good anymore, ling lingering health potion. So I usually just use three potions. Uh, the major savagery one, knock immune knockback and stamina. And the expedition one and try step uh, potion all right uh yeah the poisons yeah the, just use the typical poisons you can use immobilize poison if you want cost increase poisons are always really good if you feel the cost increase poisons are too cheesy you can always just use a typical dot poison like this one is really good as well so it's really up to you i got a uh, poison guide 
I'll just link the poison, my poison guide video in the description below so you can check out all the poisons that I use uh, in Magicka and Stamina characters. Alright, so we are done with that. And I'll just go through the skills now really quickly. The skills are pretty much... There's a, a few different different skills in and out because I, I'm not using bow anymore. So your execute, you can't use two-hand execute, so you have to use killer's bit. Killer's bit is not as good as the two-hand execute because you have to use it you only should use it when enemy is below 25% health so it's a bit tricky so, uh, but the cost is a lot cheaper so that's a good thing and uh, surprise attack your, your DPS skill and boost your get closer fear your CC and I put relentless focus here uh, because usually rarely will go on fun blah but now we are using do view as our main damage bar so I'll just put relentless focus here and when you hit four light attacks or heavy attacks, you can use uh, the the spectral bow from this skill, which is really really cool as your fourteen k damage unbuff. That is really awesome. And of course, your in cap strike. This is this skill has been nerfed a lot, but it's still really good. Back bar, shadow image. This is how you get out from Zerx. Uh, one of the best skill in the game, in my opinion, for dodging Zerx. Shuffle. Uh, of course you need this get got near nerf as well but it's still pretty good rally your heal your burst heal cloak of course you know cloak and um, revigor your 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 dot heal and this is a flex spot here you can put Dawnbreaker or smiting for AOE you can put uh, maybe two hand ultimate if you like that skill Berserker strike strike if you like that skill even something like Wheels of Blade are really really cool as well because you get uh, major protection which is really really awesome. So sometimes in like in a tight area, Wheel of Blade might do pretty well as well. It's really up to you but for me, uh, Dawn Breakers my thing is the best. Some people even use uh, something like Werewolf Ultimate to get more regeneration on your back bar that could work really well as well. Okay, so we're done with the skills. Uh, th there's one more thing you could change out I would say maybe you take out relentless focus and you put dual wheel dot skill which is I can't remember the name blood craze because it gives you really really good heals uh, this skill and it's a decent dot as well and it's really 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 cheap 700 stamina cost only it's really up to you but I prefer to go raw damage with relentless uh, focus okay and about uh, yeah I'll just go through the CP really quickly it's more or less the same actually magician 1.46 in the warlord 1 into sprinter 100% into mooncalf because you want that recovery 2 into arcanist 2 into health if you use a uh, troll king put more into health maybe 10 points or 15 points into health so you stack that up that uh, step HP recovery 45 in tumbling just 3 points into shadow what because you block really rarely on this build and you just dodge throw a lot 25 in the blast 10 shattering blows 5 melee weapon expert 37 perfect strike you could put more into perfect strike if you want but i feel like it's not that good if you put too much into it because proc sets can't create anymore so 37 is just nice 20 into piercing 20 into piercing 100 into mighty and 3 into thermal church actually for me i should take out everything from thermal church and just put into protect sex because i don't use any more dot any single dot uh, anymore but sometimes i switch out my build and i use bow once in a while so i'll just leave it there three points and uh 13 the resistance really important to resist crit three into thick skin 78 into hardy and a 69 to elemental defender the the reason why you put less into thick skin is because you can cloak and cloak can negate the damage from uh dot dot skills and uh 19 with quick recovery one to expert defender yeah that's about it for the cp and races yeah almost forgot about races i would say the f the best races would be orc red guard and wood elf this uh, these three are the best and then the rest of the stamina races like for example kajit not imperial not sure that if i miss out any other races these three are the second tier. The first tier is Orc, Red Guard, Good Elf. You want to be this three. The main reason why I put Orc uh, ahead 
of Khajiit Nod or Imperial is because you get extra melee damage from Orc and that stacks up with all the proc sets and every single thing you do so it's really strong Orc Red Guard is just crazy for resource management and gives you really good uh, max stem and stamina regeneration so that's really good and Wood Elf just gives you crazy 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 amount of regeneration it's just obnoxious it's almost OP in my opinion for stamina nightblade Wood Elf alright so yeah we are done with the race I'll just yeah for, for the outro I'll just go through the the combo the really important combo that you want to do usually so what you want to do is of course you want to buff up, buff up everything and then usually you put down your your shade and then you do a cloak you go into opponent you do a heavy attack and then into in cap and then surprise attack into execute that is what the best combo i usually do the thing is if there's quite a few enemies like maybe two or three and you want to do aoe damage you do a cloak on your back bar and then you do a heavy attack on your uh two hand bar you get the empower and then you do a dawn breaker after your empower and then you switch back to front bar and then you do a surprise attack execute that's what i do against multiple target and remember remember to always keep your shade up your shadow image because this build you lack mobility you don't have your bow to dot throw into a really quick cloak and you can just run away with major expedition you don't have that anymore you have to rely on potions that's why sh shadow image is really really important all right so i think that's about it for the build hope you like the build and i'll post i'll definitely post uh, some gameplay videos uh maybe next week and yeah if you enjoyed the video, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like, that would be much appreciated. And I guess I'll see you guys in Cyrodiil. Okay, bye bye.